Hello and welcome to Baiju's classes. In this lecture, we will discuss the strategy for GS Paper 1. But before we begin, let me make two things pretty clear. A. This is not a lecture on answer writing. B. Some of you might have been habitual 8-pointers and 9-pointers in your graduation schools. But UPSC is a different ball game. In UPSC, if you score close to 50%, you are in. So you have to concentrate all your efforts in getting closer to this 50% mark. Also, some of you might have discovered that you have accidentally cleared the prelims examination. If you are one among those, watch this lecture pretty carefully. If we divide the entire syllabus into broad areas, we'll have four important parts. What are these? History, political philosophies, society of India, and geography. But these are broad areas. So let us attempt at dissecting each of these areas so that we can come to an absolute picture what to read, what not to read, how to read, and how to anticipate questions that might be asked in your civil services means examination. Let us start with history. History is the most important topic in GS1. The bulk of the questions are asked from history, sometimes more than 100, sometimes close to 100. But this is the most important and fascinating aspect of GS Paper 1. But history is a broad area. History includes Indian art and culture. History includes India since independence. History includes how India got independence. History includes world history. We have to study world wars. We have to study about various important revolutions that have shook the world. You will have to study about world wars. You will have to study about various revolutions that have occurred on this planet. So let us attempt at closely looking at what exactly is history that is contained in your UPSC main syllabus. Let us first look at Indian art and culture. What does the syllabus tell us? Indian art and culture will cover the salient aspects of art forms literature and architecture from ancient to modern times. So the focus is on three areas. Watch this carefully. The focus is on art forms, literature and architecture right from ancient India to the modern present times. This is where your focus has to be. What are the sources from which you can get all the knowledge, relevant knowledge about Indian art and culture? To tell you, there are umpteen number of books available in the market on this subject. But I would suggest that you read one book 10 number of times rather than reading 10 books only one time. Because the mains examination not only tests your knowledge, but also your analytical ability, also your recalling power. And all you have are three hours to prove your mettle. So my suggestion would be read one standard book, read it number of times, revise and revision is the key to your success. So what are these sources from which you can get all the relevant information regarding Indian art and culture? One, you can read India's Ancient Past by R.S. Sharma. I have included this book because most of you might have read this in your prelims preparation. If you have read this, go through this once again. If you have not read this, I would suggest not to follow India's Ancient Past by R.S. Sharma, but follow Facets of Indian Culture, which is a Spectrum publication book, and follow CCRT website. So when you know what the syllabus is, when you know what are the sources from which you can get the information from. But now let me tell you where your focus has to be concentrated on. What are the key focus areas on which you have to concentrate all your energy and ability? If you ask me, you need to focus on classical dances, you need to focus on temple architecture, you need to focus on themes of India's ancient history. You need to focus on literature. You need to focus on music and musical instruments. If you focus on all these areas, then you have covered close to 90% of your Indian art and culture syllabus. And if we look at the questions that were asked over the past many, many years, we get a clear sense that Indian art and culture is entirely focused on these subjects. Let me give you examples of some of the questions that have been asked over the past few years. Let us look at some of those. Though not very useful from the point of view of a connected political history of South India, 
The Sangam literature portrays the social and economic conditions of its time with remarkable vividness. Comment. Whatever we know about the ancient Indian history of South India, whatever we know about the ancient history of South India, we get this information from the Sangam literature. So this Sangam literature becomes very important part and parcel of your syllabus. And this is exactly what was asked in your 2013 mains examination. Comment on Sangam literature. Then, Chola architecture represents a high watermark in the evolution of temple architecture. We have a number of different types of temple architectures. Dravidian style, North Indian style. So you have to look at the distinguishing features of one temple architecture with the other. And also look at the similarities among these forms of temple architecture that we witness. Discuss the Tandav dance as recorded in early India's inscriptions. So if you look at these questions carefully, the entire focus is on dance forms, the entire focus is on temple architecture, the entire focus is on literature. And this is where you have to concentrate all your energies on. Apart from these, you need to focus on the Sufi and Bhakti movements and also the influence of Islamic art and architecture on Indian society. To sum it up, pick one book, read in between the lines and this area won't appear difficult to you. But if this area appears difficult for you, let me put it bluntly and straightly. If this is difficult for you, this is difficult for every other aspirant. So instead of wasting your time by reading too many sources, by reading too many books and websites, it is advisable that you read one important valuable source and practice your answer writing. That will give you an edge over other aspirants. Apart from Indian art and culture, history syllabus also talks about modern history. How does the syllabus look like? Modern Indian history from about the middle of the 18th century until the present significant events, personalities, issues, the freedom struggle, its various stages and important contributors or contributions from different parts of the country. That means there is an element of India after independence as well, but we will discuss that a bit later. Modern history, if we take the period from 1707 to 1947, or for that matter, 1857 to 1947, this is the most easiest part of your syllabus. For one single reason that you have read this for your prelims preparation. If you have aligned your preparation in such a manner that you were focusing on both prelims as well as mains simultaneously, then this area is a cakewalk for you. In this area, what are the sources available in the market? In this area, I would suggest two important books, India's Struggle for Independence by Bipin Chandra. If you have not read this book, then there is no need to read it. Instead, you can pick up a Brief History of Modern India by Rajiv Ahir, which is a Spectrum publication book. So this is where you can get all the relevant information regarding modern Indian history, period from 1707 to 1947 or from 1857 to 1947. But where should your focus be concentrated on? Let us look at the key focus areas in this modern Indian history syllabus. You need to focus on four important agitations and moments beginning from Swadeshi and Boycott Movement, Khilafat and Non-Cooperation Movement, Civil Disobedience Movement, Quit India Movement. Apart from these, you need to focus on social and religious reform movements. The contributions of Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Swami Vivekananda, the contribution of Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar, and his role in widow remarriage. So these are the important areas on which you have to concentrate upon. Apart from these, you need to concentrate on the contributions of important personalities. For example, 2015, Bharat Ratna was awarded to Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya. What was the contribution of Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya in India's struggle for independence? So here what I'm talking about is while you read modern Indian history, also keep a close tab on what is happening nationally in this country. What are the important current happenings which you can relate to your modern Indian history syllabus. Let us take some of the examples of the questions that were asked over the past few years. A question was asked, in many ways, Lord Dalhousie was the founder of modern India. Elaborate. When we talk about personalities, we also talk about those personalities who came from abroad and who settled in India, which include personalities like Annie Basant. 
which includes personality like Lord Dalhousie, which includes personalities like Lord Cornwallis, Lord Warren Hastings. So you have to look at the contributions made by important personalities which shaped the course of modern Indian history. Another question was asked, several foreigners made India their homeland and participated in various movements, analyzed their role in India's struggle for freedom. So that means personalities, social and religious reform movements, all these become very important themes in your modern Indian history. After modern Indian history, another area in your history syllabus is India after independence. How does the syllabus look like? Post-independence consolidation and reorganization within the country. To master this area, what is it that you have to read? I'll give you the name of one book and this book shall be sufficient for your preparation. And the book is India Since Independence by Bipin Chandra. There are other books also available in the market like India After Gandhi by Ramachandra Guha, which is a very beautifully written book. But from civil service examinations point of view, India Since Independence by Bipin Chandra is a Bible which you need to follow. But where should your focus lie? The focus has to be on the admission of the princely states, role of important personalities, and important moments which took place after 1947 when India became independent. I would suggest that when you read India since independence, please keep a tab on the current happenings that are happening in this country and you can relate those current happenings with your syllabus. To give you an example, there was a question in your prelims paper on Congress Socialist Party, CSP. Why was this question asked in the examination? Who was instrumental in forming CSP? J. Prakash Narayanan. How do we know J. Prakash Narayanan? We know for his stand against emergency, which was imposed on this country by former Prime Minister Mrs. Indira Gandhi. Emergency was imposed in 1975. Today we are in 2015. 40 years have passed. And there were a number of conferences, speeches, discussions on 40 years after emergency was imposed in this country. Because such things were happening in this country and as a result, this issue became important, this event became important and that is why this question was asked in the examination. So in this year's mains examination, you might be asked about the role and significance of J. Prakash Narayanan's call for total revolution in this country. Also, we see, you might be asked about Shimla agreement that was signed between India and Pakistan in the 1970s. Why? Because Pakistan is continuously raising Kashmir issue at the United Nations. We see the foreign secretary level talks being cancelled because Pakistan has extended invitation to the Kashmiri separatist. So this issue has sprung up. So this issue becomes important for your mains examination and you need to look at the Shimla agreement that was signed between India and Pakistan. Why just Shimla agreement? Why not Lahore declaration which was signed between Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee and his Pakistani counterpart Nawaz Sharif, which preceded the Kargil War of 1999. So all these issues become important. So while you read newspapers, Whatever is happening in the world, whatever is happening in the India, pick out the relevance from those important issues that are happening in this country and relate them to your syllabus. And you'll be able to answer the questions effectively and very lucidly. In India after independence, you might also be asked about Indira Gandhi's slogan of Garibi Hatao and what was the significance of that slogan. Because previously we have witnessed questions such as Write a critical note on the evolution and significance of the slogan Jai Jawan Jai Kisan by Lal Bahadur Shastri. In this year's mains examinations, you might also be asked about the role and significance and leadership qualities of Sardar Vallabhai Patel. Because Sardar Vallabhai Patel's Statue of Unity is in the news recently. Because the Congress party is accusing the Bharatiya Janata party of appropriating the legacy of Sardar Vallabhai Patel. So Sardar Vallabhai Patel's legacy becomes important. His role in integrating various princely states into the Indian Union becomes important. So these questions might be asked in this year's mains examination from the topic India after independence. Another area of your history syllabus talks about world history. How does the syllabus look like? 
History of the world will include events from 18th century such as industrial revolution, world wars, redrawal of national boundaries, colonization and decolonization. So this is how the syllabus looks like. What are the sources available in the market from which you can master world history? You can read Mastering Modern World History by Norman Lau or you can read History of the World by Arjun Dev. So you have a choice. Either you can read Norman Lau or you can read Arjun Dev. But where should be your focus devoted on? The focus has to be on four important revolutions. American Revolution, French Revolution, Russian Revolution and Industrial Revolution. But while studying these four important topics, you need to make effective use of online sources and internet for this matter. Because these topics are not sufficiently covered in any of the books. Apart from these, your focus has to be on World War I and World War II. If you ask me, I would suggest read Arjun Dev's book. It has covered extensively whatever has happened in World War I and World War II. And these events become very important. But when we talk about world history, this is a huge area. And it is not possible for a civil services aspirant to master all important events, all important issues that have taken place in the world history. So what is the solution? What is the alternative? The alternative is that you link your syllabus with the current affairs. See what are the important issues that have sprung up in the news, link it with your syllabus and focus entirely on those areas. No need to read every bit of what has happened in the world because that is time consuming, that is irrelevant and that will not help in your cause. You might need an example. For example, US and Cuba have recently decided to restart their diplomatic relations. So US-Cuba relations become important and the relevance of US-Cuba relations on the world peace becomes important. So you have to focus on US-Cuba relations in the world history topic. To tell you, this is also the least important area in your main syllabus because not many questions have been asked in this area. So I would suggest focus on the areas mentioned in the syllabus and link those areas with the current affairs, with the current happenings that are happening in the world and your syllabus will be complete. Now let us look at some of the questions that have been asked in this area over the past few years. For example, in 2013, a question was asked, Africa was chopped into states artificially created by accidents of European competition analyze. Another type of question, American revolution was an economic revolt against mercantilism. So focusing on revolutions and focusing on World War I and World War II becomes very important, but please link it with current affairs. For that, you need to read very carefully and thoroughly the international pages of the Indian Express and the Hindu. So we have concluded our discussion on history area, which is part of your GS paper one. Let us look at the another area that is part of your syllabus and the area is political philosophies. Political philosophies such as communism, capitalism, socialism. If you look at communism, the entire foreign policy of United States after 1945 was focused on in containing communism in the newly independent areas and regions of Asia and Africa. Understand the concepts, communism, capitalism, socialism, and understand their importance and significance and their role in shaping the world history. So all you need to focus on are these important concepts and to understand what these concepts really mean. What is the difference between communism and socialism and the difference between communism and capitalism? Although this area normally should have been included in world history, but I have deliberately kept it as a separate portion because this is also relevant for your other areas in your mains examination. So the effects of all these political philosophies on world history and on Indian history becomes your focus area. Apart from political philosophies, let us come into the third important area of your GS paper one syllabus and that area is society of India. I cannot suggest a single book in this area because no book can suffice the topics that are mentioned in the syllabus. So in this area, you have to focus on topics rather than the books and you have to take extensive help from newspapers, not only newspapers from magazines such as Economic and Political Weekly.
you also need to go through various reports of non-governmental organizations, various reports of international organizations that talk about Indian society at large. But how does the syllabus look like? The syllabus talks about salient features of Indian society, Indian diversity. The syllabus talks about role of women and women's organization. The syllabus talks about globalization and its impact on Indian society. The syllabus talks about social empowerment, communalism, regionalism, and secularism. So this is how the syllabus looks like. But what should be your focus area? Let us now look at that. Please understand the concepts. Please understand what exactly these concepts mean. These concepts such as communalism, secularism, regionalism, and globalization. When you understand these concepts, then try and analyze how these concepts are adhered to or violated in case of India. What are the various news reports that come up and that talk about globalization, that talk about secularization, secularism, communalism, so that you can answer these questions in your examination. Here also, the entire focus has to be concentrated on newspapers. Whatever comes up in newspapers, that becomes your syllabus. And that is where you have to concentrate your energy on. Women's issues become important. And all this paper, and at the expense of repeating myself, I would suggest that in this area, society of India, you need extensive help from newspapers and various journals. But to extricate help from these newspapers and journals, you have to first understand these concepts. So understand what these concepts really mean. As I said, where can you get these relevant information and knowledge in this area? Newspapers, economic and political weekly, and reports of various agencies, which can be non-governmental organizations, which can be international organizations, which can be World Bank report, the HDIs, the Human Developmental Index reports that we see. So all these reports become very important because they reflect what is happening currently in Indian society. If we look at the questions that have been asked over the past few years from this area, these include discuss various social problems which originated out of the speedy process of urbanization in India. Urbanization topic is explicitly mentioned in your syllabus. So all you need to do is to understand the repercussions of urbanization on Indian society. Second issue, globalization. Also, it is mentioned explicitly in your syllabus where it talks about something else. Impact of globalization on the aged population. So you have to cover the broad areas as well. Growing feeling of regionalism is an important factor in generation of demand for a separate state. This question was asked in Maine's examination 2013 when Telangana issue was at its peak. Telangana issue is some sort of a regional issue. So it talks about something called regionalism, which is part of your syllabus. But the examiner is linking regionalism with the demand for a separate state. So here also you have to focus on current issues, current events, current happenings that are shaping Indian society and that have relevance to your civil services examination. So newspapers, economic and political weekly and current affairs become the bedrock of your preparation in this area called Society of India, which is part of your GS paper one. So we have discussed history. We have discussed political philosophies. We have discussed Society of India. Now let us now come to the fourth important area, which is geography. Geography, how does the syllabus look like? And how can you proceed? The syllabus talks about salient features of world's physical geography. It talks about distribution of key natural resources across the world. It talks about factors responsible for the location of primary, secondary, and tertiary sector industries in various parts of the world, including India. And it talks about various important geophysical phenomena such as earthquakes, tsunamis, cyclones. It talks about flora and fauna and the effect of climate changes on flora and fauna. So how shall you proceed? What are the sources available in the market on which you can rely upon? I'll tell you one important source, one reliable source, and this source is the NCRT books, right from 6th standard to 12th standard. There is also a book of NCRT called Resources that talks about the entire gamut of where important resources are available, are located in different parts of the world, including India. So what are the focus areas in the syllabus? You need to focus upon cyclones, 
hurricanes and earthquakes, you need to focus on location of industries in India. You need to focus on water bodies. You need to focus also on a very important topic called climate change. Why climate change? Because in a very recent speech at the United Nations, Prime Minister Narendra Modi talked about terrorism and climate change as two important threats to the world. So climate change becomes important. If we look at the questions that have been asked over the past few years, we see a close linkage between current affairs and the geography syllabus. For example, the question was asked, the recent cyclone on the east coast of India was called Phelan. How are the tropical cyclones named across the world? So in the year when this question was asked, we saw a number of cyclones hitting different parts of the world. These cyclones are named differently. Some cyclones are named Hadhad, some Phelan, some Nilofar. So one basic question that might hit every single aspirant is, how are these cyclones named? And this is exactly what was asked in the examinations. We have recently witnessed earthquake in Nepal. So this topic, earthquakes, becomes very important in your syllabus and becomes very important and relevant to be asked in your mains examination. In 2013 also, two important questions were asked in the same paper. And these questions related to Western Ghats. Why Western Ghats was a relevant issue at that point in time? Because Kasturi Rangan report was in the news frequently during those times. Kasturi Rangan report on Western Ghats and questions were asked on Western Ghats. So cyclones, hurricanes, earthquakes, if they are happening in any part of the world, become important and relevant to your examination and you have to read them. And if there are some reports which are tabled on the floor of the parliament or which are tabled in the public domain by various organizations, and if those reports deal with some of the areas that are explicitly mentioned in your syllabus, then those areas become very important and you need to rely and focus on all these aspects. So we have dissected each and every aspect of your GS paper one syllabus. And lastly, to tell you what you study how much you study becomes irrelevant on the date of your examination. It is how much you remember that matters. It is how you can put across your ideas on a piece of paper that really counts. So practice answer writing, that becomes your key to success. And if you need any further details, please write to us, contact us. We are ready and happy to help. Thank you for watching.